What's going on guys? My name's Sam, I'm from Pioneer, and here we have the Torai Squid new multi-track sequencer. In association with Bob DJ, we've done three videos for you, and each video is showing some different features and different ways of using the Torai Squid. So within this video, the third part video, I'm going to be looking at the running direction and the pattern mode here. Two very different um, features within the Tori Squid. The running direction is very much an industry first, however. This is the first time this has been done within hardware. And yeah, it really does open up so many ideas for um, your production. It's definitely one that caught my eye when I first unboxed this at uh, HQ. So what are the pattern mode and the running direction? So the pattern mode, if I select, for example, my baseline, which is here, and I'm actually gonna mute solo that out. So I'll go to track mute, shift solo, and I'm gonna solo my kick as well. Probably bring my kick down a little bit for this one. So the pattern mode is, it allows you to create variations of um, your selected track. So if I select my baseline and this is my, my current baseline, which was given to me by the squid because I held shift and random trigger. So this was all done by the squid. Really cool, funky baseline. Using the SP16, I've actually ducked it to my kick as well. So you get that nice jumpy feel to it. So that is currently saved to pattern one. Now each pattern individually opens up all the features here. One, uh, again, each time. So every time we open a new pattern, you're pretty much starting the whole baseline again and all the features. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy that existing baseline over. I'm gonna paste it over to uh, four different patterns, right? So I've held copy, copy the first one, and just paste that over there. So now when I open pattern two, it's obviously gonna be the exact same. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come out of pattern mode because pattern one won't be affected, and I'm gonna start taking a look at what's within my triggers. So I'm gonna lose some triggers. Let's see if we can make it a little bit different. So great, quite like that. Let's hear pattern one again. Pattern two. Cool. Now that's a really cool funky bass line. So then if we go then to pattern three, we go to trigger mode. Actually, I'm going to copy pattern two over and paste that to pattern three. Go to pattern three. And I'm, for example, I'm going to probably come up an octave. As if I was building sort of a, a you know, structuring a bass line throughout the whole track. So if I press play now. So we go back to the first one. And that's completely gone up an octave. And the way I did that was I just went to my pitch encoder and I brought it up or down or whichever way you're going to go with the pitch. So let's take it back to this original. And what I'm now going to do is I want to completely change the baseline sound itself. And this way it comes into the running direction. So throughout these whole videos, the running direction has gone from 1 to 16 in a forward direction. You'll notice if my finger was quick enough. So what happens if we change the running direction? So let's try a downwards direction. So now the track will run its way down. Don't forget, this is only within this pattern. When I switch back to my original pattern, my original song comes back. So this is just a completely different bass line on a different pattern. You can also have up to 64 patterns. So 64 variations of one track. That's, you know, that's a hell of a lot of information that the squid can handle. So go back to our trigger mode. So I'm going to listen to it in the downward direction. So here's the forward direction. So let's go in a downwards direction. This is initially going to change the way it's been sequenced. Really cool, really like that. So I'm going to keep hold of that. I'm going to go to pattern mode. I'm going to copy that over, paste it over again. We're now running pattern four. So let's try... Um, sort of a circular way. So it's gonna go in that direction. Now, that note I've noticed is sort of lagging itself. So I'm gonna paste that down here. 
Once again, if I go to my pattern, none of these have been changed. This is now a variation just on pattern four, and I really like the sound of it. So let's just bring some other elements in. And let's take a look at some of our other patterns that we've just created. Really cool feature. So you can jump between these patterns live. You know, it's, it's all done live. So um, I'm gonna keep with this pattern here on this bass line. I'm just gonna talk a little bit more about the pattern mode here. I'm gonna go back to pattern three in a minute when I bring Ableton into the mix. I'm gonna go to pattern five and I'm just gonna show you the other patterns that we could do. So you can have things like a snaked pattern. We've then got a sort of a circular round clockwise pattern. And that's my favorite where it will jump that way, that way, that way, that way. You've also got a reverse feature, which will play, obviously, as you guessed it, everything in reverse. And then you've got a switch back, which will do the forward way, and then it will come back on itself. If you hold shift, you then activate flip mode as well, and your running direction will then flash. And it'll sort of flip backwards on itself on each one. I like that one, so I'm gonna keep hold of that there on pattern five. So, let's go back to pattern three. We've got a downwards running direction. Here's our triggers. Good, now I'm gonna bring one of the VSTs that I'm currently controlling through Ableton into the mix. So I'm gonna unmute, let's unsolo things, let's get rid of that. So we've got sort of this very Amazon sort of style sound that I've created here on track 13. I'm gonna solo this and I'm gonna to go to my trigger mode and show you what I've triggered. Good. So how I've achieved this sound is through the harmonizer. Now, one of the really good features, I mean, there's many good features, the Tori Squid, there's so much more we could talk about, but the reason why I've picked these, these three videos in this way is because these are the um, tools that I'd never actually seen before, especially the harmonizer, because I know nothing about music theory. However, the Torres Squid does. So it's sort of giving you chord progression within the harmonizer here, and you can set the chord progression yourself. So if we go to, if we press play, and you'll notice these two buttons are now flashing. So what the squid can also do is record automation. So if I was to click record and then select one of the harmonizers or one of the harmonizing banks, it will harmonize it with different chords and it will record that automation in. So to select um, which chords you're gonna press or which chords the squid is gonna hit, um, the first thing you need to do is give it a scale. So it's obviously keeping in scale. And then you hold shift and select a free bank. This opens up um, what chords would be pressed. So if I was to press this, it's now playing within that scale, scale minus seven, and I can select. Different chords that it can do, and that will then save to that pre-bank. So when I come out of this, I'm just gonna select this on a different pattern so we don't ruin our original sound. Go to my scale mode. So I've just created that by using the harmonizer. Now, once again, I don't really know much about music theory, but the Torres does, the Torres Squid does. I'm just gonna bring my kick back in and show you some of the um, presets that the harmonizer have triggered, the different chords that it's now triggered. Now, when we bring everything back in,
and it's now triggering different chords, you know. So once again, I don't know much about music theory. I must admit, it was very digital era. But with the use of this harmonizer, and when you select um, the settings on it, you can actually see if it's playing a major or minor and what, um, what chord it's actually going to play because it's highlighted exactly which chords here. So there you have it, guys. There's the third part of the three-part videos. Within this video, we took a look at the running direction, the different pattern modes, and the harmonizer. Three of probably my favorite parts of the Torres Squid because when I have this set up in the studio as my heartbeat of my studio, it's given me ideas that I never thought I would have. It's, all, it's almost as if it's like accidental mistakes, which really do become perfect. For example, let's go back to our bass lines. We've got variations of bass lines. And this is what the squid can offer. So there you have it guys, there's three videos with the Torai squid. It's now out on demo in all three stores of Bob DJ. Get yourself down, come and have a play.